All right, so uh, I'm going to go through the Angry Bird project assignment submission form first. Um, we'll be doing an Angry Bird. This one will be due on the 31st of October. Um, it doesn't take a crazy amount of time to do these, uh, but it can if you haven't touched Illustrator or you're not comfortable with it. Illustrator is not going to go away, so just keep practicing with Illustrator. The better you get at it, the better your um, drawings will be and the better your animations will look. So uh, we want to understand rigging and animate a simple character, and then we'll be working within a 3D environment. Okay, so even though um, I mentioned before After Effects doesn't have 3D, just like we saw in the hologram, we have that 2.5D. Same thing with the Angry Bird. We'll give it the perspective of having um, 3D. <clears throat> We're going to sketch, then illustrate an Angry Bird. So today when I come around, I'll be looking at your sketches of your Angry Birds and your backgrounds. Um, if there's if there's one that stands out as this is the only choice that's like a good one, then I'll mention it. Some people may have all five being good choices, and you can kind of pick from there. Uh, whichever one you pick or whichever one I pick, you'll go into Illustrator and you'll illustrate that Angry Bird and character and the environment. I'll show that uh, today, the Illustrator part. Uh, we'll be using 3D layers to create a look of parallax for the environment and objects. We'll be rigging basic controls of the character. So not only do we want to be able to um, take the Angry Bird and move him across the screen, like have him bouncing, but we want to be able to have extra controls on there. So um, as our Angry Bird jumps up, we don't want his eyes fixed straight ahead because that's kind of weird. We want him to be looking up when he's jumping up and looking down when he's coming back down. Okay. So that's one control we definitely want to make sure we have across the board. Um, there should be two other items on your Angry Bird that are also animatable. So let's say your Angry Bird has a hat. That hat may just kind of be something that you could animate separately from the bird, or it has a tie, maybe the tie would animate separately, or it has a mouth, the mouth could open and close too. Okay? So uh, something else you may have to just kind of add on to yours if you don't already have that as a consideration. Um, the animation for this is you'll be doing three bounces of your Angry Bird, and that's it. So the animation is actually pretty simple, just three bounces. Uh, but we want to include the 12 principles of animation, which is squash and stretch, ease in, ease out, um, understanding timing, understanding framing, storytelling, making sure it's readable, all that stuff. Uh, you will be adding sound effects and music to this. Um, and then at the very end, you'll do a title and transition to your video just like we've done before. For your turn-ins, you should be turning in your five sketches of the themed birds and backgrounds. Um, that should be included inside your turn-in folder. And then when you turn it in, you should also have your movie, which is your movie, obviously your Angry Bird movie, um, your Illustrator artwork, and then your latest After Effects file. So the pretty standard stuff. As we go from now on into the rest of the assignments is going to be pretty standard. Any of the artwork that you've designed on paper, any of the um, uh, artwork you need for the assignment, the movie, and then uh, after your After Effects file. Uh, the movie will be turning in 960 by 540 at 30, nothing different there. Um, the length of time for this could be different depending on how you want to animate your bird. Because of the um, uh, ability for you to kind of design it different ways, your bird may move faster than other birds, right? You may go a further distance um, than some of the other ones. So uh, there's no specific time on that. It'll probably be around four or five seconds long, maybe eight seconds, probably not like 20 seconds. Uh, 10 points are possible on this, okay? So I have this sheet inside the purple binder. You can come up here and copy it whenever you get a chance. Questions on the submission form? Before I proceed, no, all right. Um, so on Canvas, um, I have provided examples. These are not ones for you to use. In the past, I've allowed people to use them, but we're at the point where you should be able to just make your own artwork. So there's this Angry Bird Spartan and this Angry Bird Spartan background. These are example ones that um, you can look at to see how I've set them up. All right, so here's the background for um, the Spartan one. It is, yes. Uh, but you'll see how we'll need to make it 
different proportions based on um, how big we are going to create that. Uh, some things we may want to create inside of After Effects, but we still want to draw it inside Illustrator just so we have a feel for how all the colors are working together. So this background here, I could definitely just do that in After Effects, but I like to have it here so I can see how well this color is going to work with the other colors. Illustrator is a lot more friendly with all that kind of stuff. Uh, where are my layers at? So all of the different elements here, I'm looking at it as, yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm looking at all these elements as where they are in depth wise, okay? So if I was to stand exactly where I'm at, how far from my camera are each of these elements? Any elements that are on essentially the same plane would be essentially, they could be on the same layer, okay? Anything that would be moving separately will be on a different layer. So um, looking at something as far as the background, the very, very background goes, I have my sky back here, which is just a gradient, okay? Uh, that's on a separate layer. That'll be as far back as any element is gonna go. There shouldn't be anything obviously behind it because this is gonna cover my screen. Then I have these clouds in the very top of this, okay? Each one of those clouds possibly could be at the same distance from my camera, but because I'm going to animate these clouds differently, I want them separated, okay? So each one of those clouds is on a separate layer. Um, I also have three mountains. So I have this one, this one, and that one. Uh, each one of these mountains, when I go into After Effects, is going to be at a different depth. Okay, all the mountains are not going to be at the same depth. That will look very flat. I want them all to be separate depths so that as my camera moves, I can see where they're at, where they lay in uh, the distance. It'll look really cool. Um, I also have my Pantheon right here. Oops, sorry, right there. And then I have my Pantheon platform, which is right there. Okay, so these two elements, even though they are essentially at the same uh, level, they're at the same distance from the camera, um, they are actually on two separate layers because when I get into After Effects, I want to assign a different texture to each one of those, just like we did before on, I don't know, one of our assignments we assigned a texture to things. Um, I want to have a texture on the Pantheon, and I want to have a different texture on the Pantheon platform. It'll give a nice look to it instead of this flat look. Um, I have a bounce platform, so that's like where my Angry Bird is going to be bouncing. And then I have the soldiers who are also on the um, same layer, where are they at, my soldiers. Now they're all in the same layer because I'm not gonna do anything separate with them. They're literally just standing there, uh, kind of like they're just waiting for the angry bird. My bird is going to be zoomed in like this. We'll see you know, a couple soldiers. He's gonna bounce to the edge of this platform, bounce to this, bounce to this, and then bounce there. That's all he has to do. He's not in there yet, okay? Uh, I like to keep my things separated. So you could go into one file and you could put everything in one file. I find that very cluttery though, okay? Because I wanna have one file that just focuses on my Angry Bird, one file that focuses on my background, right? Um, so this is what a finished product looks like. I'll show my Angry Bird finished. Oop, that's not my Angry Bird, that's something else. Angry Spartan, there he is. Okay, so there's my Angry Bird. Yep, so I keep him in his own separate file. That way I can focus just on him here. And again, everything that I want to be able to give a separate texture to or move separately is in a separate layer, just like before. So his shield, I want to be able to move his shield separately. As we're going to be doing squashing and stretching on the Angry Bird, his shield shouldn't squash and stretch. That doesn't make sense. So I want his shield to be a separate item that stays perfectly round. The same thing with his arrow slash spear, that should be a separate thing too that doesn't squash and stretch. That's just a solid piece that's allowed to move. Um, his helmet um, will actually squash and stretch just because of how he's set up, but that's fine. Um, his eyebrows are all separated because I want each eyebrow to be able to turn as needed. So if he's nervous, let's say I use him for something else. He's nervous, his eyebrows go up. He's uh, angry, his eyebrows go down, or he's focused, his eyebrows go down. Each pupil is separate. So again, I could animate and move each pupil separately. 
I don't want to keep them both on the same layer because if he decides to look left, that's as far left as he might be able to look, where maybe I want this one to come just a little bit further over to give it a little bit more uh, accentuation, right? There it is. Um, his eye lines that are under his eyes are also on separate layers because, again, I may decide that I wanted to uh, animate these differently. Maybe he's like this at one frame, and another frame he's like that, or whatever. There's no harm in breaking this up into too many layers because in After Effects we can join things together. It's a lot more difficult, obviously, to break things apart in After Effects. Um, here is his eye socket. Again, that's a separate item. Here is his beak top. There is his beak bottom. Because at some point I may want to take the beak bottom and go to my rotate. And rotate his beak bottom opening. Why are you flipping? Oh, I clicked the wrong one, that's why. There we go. So at some point I may want that kind of animation to be possible, so I've broken those up into uh, separate pieces. And then his body is obviously a separate piece as well. And you'll see that's what the body looks like, okay? It's all very simple shapes, okay? Uh, here's another one that I was just kind of screwing around with on that one. And then here's like a Walking Dead one. Okay, so instead of bouncing on rocks, he's bouncing on cars. However, I decide that that would happen. Okay, so let's start this off from scratch, and I'll show you the process for this. So we make a new document, 960 by 540. Make sure it's RGB. Hit Control-Shift-D so we don't see. Oops, I can't hit Control-Shift-D because that's a hotkey for something else. I have to go to view and then turn off the transparency grid. There we go. Um, cool. So this will be my angry bird. So I'm going to go and create a basic shape, which will be just an ellipse. It doesn't matter how big I make it here. If it's too big, I can always shrink it down in After Effects. So it's not a huge deal. <coughs> so um, I'm going to give this just a color. We'll go with something like that. To give the uh, character a little bit of depth, I don't like to keep anything as a straight line. Okay, like right now, this is all just a single solid stroke going around. So I'll use Shift W or the Stroke tool, the Width tool, and then I can control the width of that. So now I've basically just varied the width of that stroke all the way around. Looks much more interesting than uh, not having that. Um, for his eyes, I'm going to go here and again just kind of draw out some eyes. You'll notice I don't really separate anything until I get done. There's no point, in, in, in my opinion, of starting to separate everything until I know exactly what I want yet. Uh, so let's just reset this. And give it a little bit of thickness there. This one should be a little bigger because it's closer. And then I'll draw some pupils. Okay, I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I just want to show a couple uh, specifics of how I'm doing this. Uh, no stroke on that. Okay, here's another instance. Right now they're at the same height. Obviously this one should be maybe a little bit further up so that it hits the right spot. And maybe a bit over more. This one should maybe like squished a little bit more. All right, so now I'm going to go and draw the beak. Uh, I'll probably use the curvature tool for this. There we go. So he's got uh, a big beak. All right. So now that I have this, I'm going to use another shape to break this up into two separate pieces. So I'm going to just use the pen tool or the curvature tool or whatever and just kind of draw out where I want that to be broken. Switch the line, change the color so I can see it better. Okay, maybe I don't want it right there. Maybe I want to pull that down, maybe rotate. No, I think it probably was good in the right spot there. All right, we'll just say that that's good. Okay, so now I can use that Shift M, which is what we used, I showed on the hologram where we can combine shapes, separate shapes, whatever, 
and I'm just going to click this shape and then click that shape. And now that should give me two separate shapes. There you go. There's one shape. I'll give this a color. Just so you can see it, that's blue. And then where'd the bottom one go? There it is. And the bottom one's green. And then that stroke, I don't need that stroke anymore, so I can just delete that. So now I have two separate pieces for the beak pretty quickly. And again, I can give them outlines. I can uh, use my width tool. Maybe the middle would look better. Play with that later. Okay. Um, cool. So there's his beak. I rotate it just to verify that you know what I see underneath would look appropriate. Um, if you're going to animate something and something's going to open up, obviously I want to check underneath and make sure that what's underneath still works. Um, let's say I rotated it and something was funky looking under here. I'd want to adjust and correct that. Uh, I don't like the position of this. This should probably come down a bit more. Uh, I have to be aware, too, of this bottom line. So just so you can see, eventually he'll be bouncing on the ground. Pretend that that's my ground. If his beak was way down here, as he bounces, he's going to be like intersecting the ground every time he goes and does his stuff. So I want to just be aware that I don't want anything typically to go past that point. Um, some things could if, if it made sense, but in this case, it doesn't. Uh, I think I'm just going to make you just take the stroke up a little bit on that. And then I think maybe I'll just shift W and make that a bit bigger. Sometimes with that width tool, you just got to find the right spot that it looks best. Yes, you do. So if I do it here, you'll see how it pinches in the corner. Well, if I do it right in the corner, then it won't do that. I have to actually grab the corner, though. Come on. All right, I'm going to double click it and then hit shift W so I can isolate it. And then make that bigger. Yep. There you go. So that looks good enough for what we're doing. Um, cool. So now he needs eyebrows. So um, I could use the brush tool. I can use the pen tool. I can use the curvature tool. This one seems like a happy little bird. So I think he's going to be in a happy pose to start off with. So something like this. With tool again. my reflect tool to reflect this. So I just hit O to get the reflect tool. Oh, it's right there. And the same thing for, let's say I wanted some lines under the eyes. So just add a line under the eyes. Uh, once you start using the width tool, you'll start to develop um, profiles up here. Like when I click on this, you'll see that that's a profile now. Where are you at? Oh, it's right there. Um, and I can use this, hit I, and I drop that, and I should be able to pull that one. It's that one, but it's just backwards because I drew it differently. Okay, I'll just rotate this around and then adjust the path and then adjust the thickness. Reflect tool, reflect this side, bring this up, rotate it, make it a bit smaller because it's on the other side. There you go. Okay. Um, if I wanted to add a little bit of a highlight here, like if you look at any of the Angry Birds, you'll see how they have this like little uh, white spot on the bottom of them, like so, or they have a highlight on the top of them, like that. Um, that's the same process <clears throat> that I did for this thing. So I'm just going to copy this so I have a copy of it. I'm going to uh, create a shape for this. I might be able to just duplicate this and bring that up, maybe. We'll see. And then we'll use Shift-M. I'll click that area, and then I can just delete these other areas. 
And now I have this that I can pretty much set right here, get rid of the stroke on it, <clears throat> and then give it a lighter color than that. So that works pretty good. And if I need to adjust it, I still have the points here. Somewhere I can add a point, point to the path and maybe scoot that up some. Okay, so same thing on the body. I always duplicate it so I don't ruin the original. That took me a long time to build. And then I'll duplicate this again. Come on. Maybe like that. Shift M, click the area I want, and then go to my direct select and delete and delete. And then I can just take this, give that a lighter color, take the stroke off of it, and then slide it back into position. Now, if I get something like this, um, where the stroke for the outside of the bird uh, is now being covered by that, obviously I could just move this, right? That's not a big deal to move it. Uh, but let's say I'm trying to get it to line up perfectly with it. Um, I may separate my stuff into different pieces. So here's the body. Let me copy this over so you can see it. There we go. Um, let's say that I have this one that doesn't have a stroke on it, and then this one is only stroke. So now I can take this stroke and just drop it on top of the entire bird. And then just make sure that my layer stack is correct. And now it'll look like this highlight is now tucked inside of that. Okay, so you may have to get creative with how you do your layers in order to get the effect that you're going after. Um, okay, so on this guy so far, I have the eyebrows, which count as one thing if I was going to animate the eyebrows, maybe going up and down. Um, I have the eye pupils, so if I wanted these to move up or down, that's another thing, which we do want that to happen. And then I would need one more thing that would happen. So let's say that I created a little hat for them. And we'll swap these colors. That fits perfectly. I drew almost a perfect hat. Years ago, I had a student who used to build these like tiny hats. Um, they were like fancy like top hats, but they were like this big, and people would wear them like that was a thing. There was like a whole culture of people or kind of people that would just wear these weird hats. close that off, so let's just close it off there and there. That was a horrible closing it off. Delete these two and control J to join them. And then use the pen tool to get rid of that point. All right. And I'm just gonna combine these into one shape using that shift uh, M and now it's all one shape. There we go. And then this should actually maybe come in front of him. So let's move this to the top layer and then scoot this down a little bit more so it seems definitely like it's on top of him. Maybe even kind of rounding about. It's a weird looking hat, right? there, put those down here. And let's go with a different color because that color looks weird. Uh, I'm going to eye drop this color and then I'm just going to take the hue <coughs> and slide it over to the blue and then take the brightness and darken it. It's too much. There we go. So there's his hat. And then this thing could be able to move uh, in 3D. So as he's jumping, the hat will kind of bounce up, right? So as he hits the top of his peak, um, the hat will be on his head. And then when he comes down, the hat will kind of float for a second and then land back on his head. And then I would use Shift W, maybe exaggerate some of these paths a bit, like that. All right, 
So now everything's too big, so I'm gonna shrink it down so everything fits inside the screen. And pretty much done, I could add some more stuff, okay? So then I would go through and just start moving stuff to layers. So make a bunch of layers, grab the hat, move it to its own layer, and give it a name, right? And then I turn it off so that I can see what it is. Um, all of these items are part of the body, so I'm just gonna throw all of those onto their own layer called body, or badu, there we go. And then turn that off, and then just keep going. So each one of these will be on their own separate layer, so this one will be on this one, this one will be on that one, uh, I like to label things with the character's um, side. So if it's the character's right eye, I will call it right eye, not my right. So this would not be right eye. That's his right eye. That's his left eye. So I would call that one left eye. And then I would call this one, oops, I called that one the wrong one. All right, let's go back to one. This is left eye because that's the one on that side. Yeah. Okay. So if one's called left eye, then the other one's going to be called chili. Anyone get that joke? No. TLC? Nobody? Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, take this one and so on, all right? So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but that's the idea. Separate everything into separate layers. Better to have more layers than not enough layers, okay? So as far as him, that's how he gets drawn. The background, it's the same or very similar type fashion. Uh, turn off that transparency grid, 960 by 540. <clears throat> the only difference here is that we are going to be going bigger than our environment. So our end rendering product will be 960 by 540. But in order for us to move from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, we have to be aware of the scale of this. Okay. So like on, I'm just going to create some basic shapes here. Okay. So here's a basic shape. I'm going to round these off. And I'm going to shrink this down, okay? Now, you might be uh, tempted to say, okay, well, he's going to jump three times, so I'm going to make one here, oops, one there, and one here. The problem is that we're going to be zoomed in on this. So imagine we're zoomed in here. This is what we're going to see. So we have to draw everything as it's a smaller item so that he has room to jump around, okay? We don't want to draw it as this huge thing, I want you to think of this as like a panoramic, like a huge panoramic, and our character will be moving along this panoramic, will be zoomed into the panoramic. So I'm going to take this smaller one, and I'm just going to duplicate it a few times. And I don't know why. It didn't work last time I did this, but uh, Control-D used to step and repeat, and it, for some reason doesn't want to do that anymore. There we go. And then I will just take those four, and I will copy those. Take those four and copy those. Cool. All right. So now I have these like little platforms that my character could bounce on. I'm going to shrink them down so that they all fit inside the screen. Okay. Now he may only bounce uh, from like this one to that one to that one, but I have a lot more in here because my world is going to be a bit bigger than I need it to be. Okay. I'm actually going to delete a couple of these because I need to have some kind of obstacle for him to go through. Uh, I don't like to leave it even, so like this is one, this is three, two, and three, that's fine. Um, maybe this one's even a bigger opening. He has to jump really far, and then that one. All right, and then I'm going to go in here with my um, curvature tool, and I'm just going to draw this kind of like weird shape, right? I want to create something that adds a little bit more definition to, let's say, the top of these things. So I'm just doing this. And this will be used to create like a little topper for all these pieces. And I've gone further because I want to scale this down so that I have more detail in it. All right, that's good enough. Oops. So I'm going to scale this down until it fits. If you've ever seen Mario, uh, it's kind of like the Mario toppers. That's good. 
So now I'm just going to grab everything here, make sure that everything's intersecting, which it is. I'm going to hit Shift M, and then I'm just going to hold down Alt and subtract that. Boom. So now I have these bottom pieces, which are just the solid color pieces, and then I have those toppers, which are just extra pieces. Um, I'll give them different colors. You want to pick a color scheme. So even though I'm going here and I'm grabbing a random color, at some point, I'm going to go in there and pick better colors. I just like to get something on the screen so that I can get it laid out. Um, if you use your swatches, if you're not aware, you can make a new color group. Call it whatever. Uh, angry bird background. And then you can start adding different swatches to this palette so that as I decide, like, okay, I like this green, I'm going to use that. I like this black, I'm going to use that. Um, and basically, I'm selecting from already driven colors, not just random pieces of colors, okay? Um, so let's say for the topper here, I'm going to eye drop the green, and then I'm going to switch this. So I'm going to go to my hue and just cut that in half, like 50. No, I don't think I like that. I'm going to double it, 200. That's better. So now I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to drop it into my swatches so that now I have that as one of my colors. There we go. And we could do the same thing as I did before, which is um, take this, do the Shift W, and then add maybe some thickness to those lines if we decided we wanted to do that. I think that might be too thick. That's better. And if I do it to one, I should be able to uh, use the eyedropper and do it to the other ones. Nope, we didn't want to take the whole thing. Fine. Now we'll just go to this. Where's my strokes? I don't have that listed. Hide options, no. not letting me save it. Fine, I'll just do it manually for a couple of these. Come on. All right, and so on, so you do that, okay? So I would have these things, I would create more things in the background, looking at the angry Spartan background. You can see all of this kind of blank space here. Uh, there's my one background, here's my, um, my mountains and so on. Okay, my clouds are kind of abstract, uh, like clouds. Um, you could do other shapes too, like if you created an ellipse, and then you duplicated it and duplicated it and duplicated it and duplicated it and duplicated it like so. You could grab all these shapes, hit Shift M, and then join everything together. Um, you can also use the Shape Builder tool or the combine tool, which is Pathfinder, and then say combine everything into one. That works also. And so now there's kind of like an abstract looking cloud. And then using some of the other tools, you could also go in here and say simplify. And this will give you different options for what that looks like. Okay, if you do something like clouds, make sure you have a variety of them. There's nothing more boring than seeing this in the sky where every cloud looks exactly the same. That's not likely, right? So you want to have something where, you know, the clouds are all different. So you maybe have to take and make several different clouds if that's what you're going to use, okay? If I'm going to do peaks for these clouds, I would do them the same way. I would draw them out, use that Shape Builder tool to isolate areas and create a peak just like I did for the tops of those little areas. Um, if I had If I had something like this, I would draw one brick and then just copy that brick over and over and over again. Or if I had something like this, I would draw this brick, this brick, and that brick, and then I could just draw them and move them around as I needed to, okay? Um, same thing here. You see the different layers that are there. So maybe in those cases, those are just different strokes that are inside that same layer, okay? And then everything for that ground gets parented or grouped together into one layer. 
Um, you can see the stuff in the background here, all these different elements there and here and so on, okay? So uh, the Angry Bird, you don't need to take into After Effects yet, but once you get your background done, if you wanna start testing stuff out and seeing what it's gonna look like, you can start doing that. So I'm gonna go and I've saved all of my artwork into my uh, template folder that I copied. I renamed it Angry Bird and I put everything inside of my Angry Bird uh, or my artwork folder. And then I'll make this Angry Bird. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in just my background, just so you can see where this is gonna be uh, heading. Uh, Angry Bird, artwork, Spartan background. Same settings as before, that will not change. Every time we bring something in from After Effects or from Illustrator or Photoshop, we'll use that same thing. Make sure if we have different iterations, one, two, three, or four, if you did have that, you would uncheck this. Regardless, this shouldn't be checked. Okay, now I'm gonna double click this layer. And here are all my different layers that I have. <clears throat> now, when I originally drew this one, um, I made it 1920 by 1080. So um, I'm gonna go and resize this document. This is the easiest way to do this, is to go to my artboards and then fix this so that it is, I'm gonna click that artboard and delete it because that's the wrong one, there we go. And I'll click this artboard and set this to 960 by 540, there we go. And I'm just gonna resize everything so it fits nicely inside that. Now, it may not fill the entire thing, that's fine. Uh, when we get into uh, After Effects, we'll take care of all that, okay? Now, as I resized it in at Illustrator, brought it back in here, you see that everything just went haywire. It doesn't know what to do. So this is where you wanna recognize that it was the wrong size immediately, fix it, and then re-import it. Oops, and then make sure you click the right settings because that was the wrong settings again. Composition retain, that's unchecked import. Double click, it says 960 by 540, 30 frames per second, and there it is. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take everything, I want to um, click the 3D layers, and then I want to start to layer everything as if it were 3D. The bigger the distance between each item, the more parallax we're going to see. So we want a huge distance from the stuff that's in front to the stuff that's way in the back. So on my sky, I'm gonna hit P for the position, and I'm gonna take this uh, Z position, and I'm gonna put it to a positive number. Positive is pushing it back. And let's say I set it to 2,000. As it gets pushed back, you'll see that it got smaller. So what do I do? Scale it up. There you go, so now it fits. So even though I drew them in Illustrator, I placed them exactly where I needed them, you'll see that I do have to go back here and kind of reposition them and scale them up. Uh, the next one I'm gonna do is the um, bounce platform. I'm gonna go to position and I'm gonna leave it exactly at zero, okay? This is where my bird is going to be. So if everything basically starts at zero and goes backwards, then that's fine. Um, I could pull them forward, but I think leaving it at zero is the best way, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, but I do need to scale it up, and then I do need to scoot it down. Okay, now looking at how the bird is going to be bouncing from platform to platform, um, I can see that um, this whole thing isn't gonna fit on here as it gets scaled up, and that's fine, that's what I want. Uh, but where exactly do I want this is going to be a question. So let's say I make this 222. Okay, so that means that the bird will start roughly here. The soldiers will be right here. He'll bounce, he'll bounce, and that gives me a chance to uh, be able to pan my camera, not the item, pan the camera over to see where he gets to the other side. Okay, now I've set my extremes. I've set this is as far back as I'm gonna go, that's my background. This is as close as I'm gonna go, that's my foreground. So now it's just a matter of placing all the other stuff in between it, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go to my cave. My cave is gonna be right here on the edge. 
So I'm going to go to scale. I'm going to put this up to 200 because I believe that's what I scaled my bounce platform to. I'll put it exactly at 200 so it's easier. And then I'll just scoot the, the cave down and I'll scoot the cave over to that side. Uh, what else? Pantheon and Pantheon platform. These two I will scale up to, um, actually I don't think I need to really scale them up. Let me just push them back first. So these will be pushed back, I'll say 2000 is as far as I go. Maybe the Pantheon and its platform will be about 300 or 500 back. That seems like a good distance. I don't want to type it in because it uh, resets both uh, X, Y, and Z positions. So 500 is good. So now I'll scoot this down. Oops, not move or not scale. Maybe I will scale it up just a bit. I'll take the platform and scoot it down so that it covers this area. I don't want it to be lined up perfectly with the um, bounce platform because that would look odd. So it's going to be just a little bit higher than that. And those are good. So let me just lock my platform. Let me lock the bounce area. Let me lock the cave. Let me lock my sky. Okay. My clouds will probably be roughly as far back as the sky is, but a little bit closer. It's so not all the way back, but obviously not as far or as close up as the other ones. So these I'm just going to set back to 1500. Now these are just arbitrary numbers. Okay. Uh, like I said, I've set my extremes and I'm just kind of setting things in between it. And then I'll make the clouds a bit bigger. And then I can just position the clouds like so. These will be repositioned, but just for now, I'm just kind of getting them out of the way so I can see what they're doing. Whoops. There we go. And then because they're so far back, I'll probably actually duplicate the clouds and have like more like big bull, uh, buckets of clouds, big areas of clouds. Lock those, those are good. <clears throat> my soldiers should be at the same area as my bird, so they'll be right here. So I'm going to shrink or move these down. I'm going to scale them up to 200. Okay, they're getting pixelated. What button do I need to hit so they're not pixelated anymore? Anyone remember? So it's that one here. It just continuously rasterized, meaning that it's going to go back to the original Illustrator vector work and reshape it. And on all of these, I'm going to unlock them. I'm going to hit that same button on all of these because I want to make sure that as I'm scaling these, that they are as clear as I can make them. Okay. Now, if I zoom in this far, well, that ho looks horrible, but it's 1600%. We're going to look at it at 100%, which is appropriate. All right, so uh, my clouds are about 1,500 back. My Pantheon is 500 back. So I have these mountains. I'm going to move them so that they are somewhere between the clouds and the um, uh, Pantheon. So 1,200 seems good. I'll scale them up. And then I'll just reposition them so that they make more sense where they're at. And maybe this needs to be scaled up a lot more. Good. And then last one. Just kind of fill in the gap over here. Oops, actually, right there needs a little gap filled in. I'm going to duplicate it so I have two of these. And maybe scale it, but negative scale it in the x direction. There we go. And I 
think the last one, I just need to scoot it down just a bit. There we go. All right, so there's all my stuff. Now let's see where the actual 3D comes in because we've stacked all these things in space, but we don't see anything different. It looks pretty much like we, we had inside of Illustrator. Um, just so you can kind of see this before I take it to the next stage, if you go to this active camera, you can change this to front view, left view, top view, whatever. Um, I wanted to do top, there we go. And I can see here's all my layers. So here's my sky, here's my clouds, here's my mountains, Pantheon, and then that foreground area. So all of them are layered, so there is a distance there. So now I can make a camera. I'm gonna make a one node camera because it's easiest to use. Uh, I'm going to leave this at 50, and I'm going to hit OK. I move my camera to the top. <clears throat> and now if I were to go to my position, my camera is basically facing dead on the world just like we saw it. So if I move my camera to the left or to the right, I should be able to see a difference in how all these elements are moving. So if I go here, here's the position. Left and right is the X direction. So look at how I move this. And you can see how that foreground is moving a lot different than the background is. That's what we're after. That's the whole point of being able to stack the layers so that we can see a difference in how far each item is. If all these items are this close to each other, they're like 100 pixels away from each other, that effect is not going to be very obvious. It's going to be very, very, like way too subtle. So that's why my sky is 2,000 in the distance so that I can see the movement. That's why my ground is so close to us so that we can see the difference between those two items. Even my mountains, if you look at them, all the mountains are moving at the same distance. I'm going to separate that because that I want more of that kind of effect. So I'm going to go to my position for this and I'm just going to kind of randomly just like maybe push this one back, maybe pull this one forward, maybe scale that one up a little bit more and move it down a bit. I'm looking at some of these areas that may be kind of open, like the mountain or the drawing didn't go far down enough. Uh, I'm going to push this one back a bit more. Oops, too far. I'll scale it up some. There we go. And then I think mountain four is the other one that I need to maybe scoot over like this and like that. I'll jump back to my camera, go back to its position. And now you can see that even the mountains are getting a different kind of movement apart from each other. Like if you look at that gap right there, that's really where you're going to kind of see this stuff. In order for this to work, you have to have detail in your items. If I just had squares, you can kind of see it, but those mountains or something like that really give you that huge perspective uh, of how all these things are moving. Now this is only one element of it. We could also go to rotate and we could rotate this as well. Now this doesn't work very good for this kind of effect because everything's flat. Uh, but we could do other stuff too um, that would allow us to get some sort of 3D-ness to it. That doesn't do anything. Uh, there's also orientation. I don't think we'll, any, this will give us any different. No, it's the same thing. All right. We have to have something else set up for that to do anything different. Okay, So that gets you the starting point as far as where things are positioned. And then my next stage would be to go through and just start adding textures to each of these items. So just like I did before, let me jump into, I believe it was my text. Here's this ground texture. I'm just going to copy that into my Angry Bird. And I'll just drop this into here. That didn't drop in. Let's try that again. Drop in artwork. bring it down here. I'll scale it. And now I'm just going to hide this and then go to my um, ground, wherever my ground is, bounce platform. Go to stylize, go to texturize, <clears throat> pick that ground texture. And now I'll have a bit of a texture on top of that. Okay, so now it'll look a little bit more realistic. Uh, maybe play with the light direction if I need to. Oh, deciding to freeze up. Nope, you're not. What are you doing? Oh, you're just on the wrong key. There we go. 
So that changes it a little bit. Maybe play with the contrast some. Maybe keep it subtler. Okay. And then also when we get into, I would do that for every, literally every single item in my scene I would do that for. Uh, and then when we get into adding maybe some lights into the scene, like a spotlight. Mm, I set this to spotlight, 50, 108, 100, inverse, 392, and okay. I don't cast shadows in this case. And then I'm gonna crank up my intensity a bit. Too much. There we go. Um, I probably won't use this light on this one, just because of the, it's supposed to be like a daytime scene, but you get the idea here where we can kind of focus that light on certain things. In some cases, that may be a desired effect you want, uh, but we have to be aware too that as we move the camera, have we lost that parallax effect, or do we still have it? With that light in there, we've kind of lost it. Um, maybe I'll add another light, and this will be kind of like an overall light. So I'll set this one to parallel, no offset, or no fall off, and then set this to maybe 50 intensity. Then I'll go back to my original light and move everything kind of to the top here. And take, nope. Take this intensity down some so I don't blow it out. Go to my parallel light, make this a bit brighter, 100 maybe. Go back to my spotlight, <clears throat> pull this intensity down some. So now I've lit up the entire scene, but I have this thing to maybe focus my attention on that. So maybe I'm kind of like, you know, spotlighting my guy. In this case, I'm not gonna use a spotlight, but I just want you to see it. Um, feather, let's turn the feather off. Turn the cone angle down. There we go. And you can see this is like an actual spotlight. There's the spotlight. You can see the circle from it. And this can be rotated as well. So if we're trying to follow him, we could follow him around, okay? Again, I'm not gonna use a spotlight, but it's an option. And I don't think I really need the parallel light because I have my other stuff. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna save this, Angry Birds, good. And so that's your first step is to draw your stuff out in Illustrator. Once you've drawn out the Angry Bird, once you've drawn out the background, then you can start bringing those things into After Effects and start layering the background. Don't bring in the Angry Bird yet, that's a whole different setup that we want to do. Start with the background. Yep, get the background in there, layer it, put a camera in so you can test it, add some texture to it, and then we'll go into the Angry Bird part, okay? So I probably won't talk about the Angry Bird um, until Wednesday, I'll go through the Angry Bird, how to set up the Angry Bird's controls. That's the biggest thing, is we want to be able to control the Angry Bird nice and easily. Okay, questions? Sir? No, no, no. My, <clears throat> for whatever reason, I'm prone to, and then maybe this is just how Illustrator works, maybe. I'm prone to always making like two artboards, so I always have to go and delete the other artboard. So I don't know why, I may, I, like again, I think it's just me. I have two artboards here. Why did I click the wrong button? But yeah, you want to make sure that your background fits within that white area. So you have your 960 by 540. That's 960. Make sure everything fits in there. But also make sure that it doesn't just fit perfectly. Like I wouldn't draw my mountains so they stop right at that line because I know that they're, they need to have that ability to expand out. Okay? Even the way I drew them here, um, like this one, duplicate him over. I shouldn't have stopped it at this angle. I should have just drawn this straight down. That way I wouldn't have had to worry so much about scaling it up so that it fits because I'd have plenty of backdrop there as it's sitting way in the back. Okay, I don't know what that, same goes for the background. Same goes for the background. Now that could be scaled up or rebuilt in After Effects, but um, any of those other things you can't. Okay, anything else? Bam. it'll eventually fill up the entire square, but we have to redo the layout in After Effects so that we do have that depth. Good, anything else? 